I'd like to introduce mathematicians Dr. Wayna and Dr. Rivers Moore, who are leading experts in analyzing position data using derivative. Hi, I'm Dr. Wayna, and I'm going to explain how to take the derivative of a general polynomial equation. So here we just have part of a polynomial. We have just one term from it, and we're going to take the derivative by first uh, subtracting one from the initial power, and then multiplying the original power uh, by the coefficient to get the new coefficient. So this is the position equation that we determined from the satellite tracking data that we collected. Uh, so here it is. Then later we decided to use a derivative technique to figure out the velocity equation that we can use later to determine if he was breaking the pose. So first of all what we do is we subtract one from the power of each term. And so five fifths is one here because this is sixteen fifths, so that's makes it easier for us. Then we're going to multiply the original power by the original coefficient to get the new coefficient. Yeah, that's what we have here. Uh, and we see this method throughout the rest of the um, new equation. And here, because there was no x, because x to 0 is equal to 1, um, x, so we take down the power at 0 and multiply it by 15, so we get 0. So in the final equation, we have these two terms change, and we have nothing for 15x. My name is Dr. Rivers Moore, and I'll explain to you how to find the derivative of the velocity equation, which will give us the acceleration equation, and then we will find the derivative of the acceleration equation. And this derivative will later be useful um, in finding the maximums of the acceleration equation so that we can find out whether the driver was in fact breaking the codes. So, our initial velocity equation was negative 1 20th x to the 11th fifths plus 5x to the 11 tenths. Um, in order to find the acceleration equation, we use the same principle as we did to find the derivative of the displacement equation. So, we will first bring down the power of the velocity equation, which was 11 fifths, and multiply it by the coefficient, and this will give us negative 11 a hundredths. Um, and then the same principle is used uh, by subtracting 1 from the power. So 11 fifths minus 5 fifths will equal 6 fifths. Um, the same principle is applied to the second term of the equation, which yields 11 halves x to the 1 tenth. Now, to find the derivative of acceleration, uh, we simply use the same process. Our final derivative of acceleration will be negative 33 over 250 x to the 1 fifth plus 11 twentieths x to the negative 9 tenths. We will now take a break from the math and hear passenger complaints about the driving of this bus driver. We were jolted from side to side. And back and forth, and I felt endangered having such a reckless driver driving the bus. We hope he will be convicted in court. And fired. Stupid bus driver doesn't know how to, how to drive. God, if I was on the road, I would have given him a one-finger salute. We're very worried about drivers and their acceleration rates and going over the speed limit here at Greyhound. Are these passenger complaints valid? We will now find out by returning to the math. The goal of the next step is to solve for the max point of the velocity graph. Um, the derivative of the velocity graph was the acceleration function, which is right here, and we equaled that function to zero in order to find the points where the velocity graph had a slope of zero, and this will be the x point where um, the, the maximum y value can be found. Um, to start with, we simply moved over the first term to the left side of the equation, and then we divided the first coefficient by the second coefficient, and divided the first x term by the second x term. This was just using simple algebra from this step to this step. Um, and in order to make this into a single x term, we simply subtracted the bottom exponent from the top exponent, so this gave us x to the 11th tenths equals 50. Um, then we took the 11th root of 50 to the 10th. As we found out, x equals 35.036 seconds when velocity is at its greatest. So next, we had to plug in this value of x into the function for velocity. And the y value that was yielded by just plugging this into x was 125 feet per second. Next, we had to convert this 125 feet per second to miles per hour in order to compare it to the speed limit. And this was done by simple conversion since there's 3,600 seconds in an hour and there's 5,280 feet in a mile. 
Um, and our final value for the driver's maximum speed was 85.2 miles per hour. However, the speed limit is 60 miles per hour. So now we're going to solve for the max points of acceleration. So we're going to take the derivative of acceleration and we're going to set that equal to zero, just as we did last uh, time. And we're going to set the derivative of acceleration equal to zero and we're going to plug in the derivative that we found. And we're going to go through the same set steps that we just went through to get x equals 3.66 seconds. And then we're going to plug that into the acceleration or the second derivative and we get 5.74 feet per second squared. And then we have to compare that to acceleration code which says the maximum acceleration is 7 feet per second squared, and since that's less than that, he's actually fine that way. To recap, our mathematicians just explained to us how they took the derivatives of the velocity and acceleration graphs and found where their y values equal zero. They then took the corresponding x values and plugged them into the original equations for velocity and acceleration. The, this yielded the maximum points on the velocity and acceleration graphs. That is, where the bus driver was driving at the greatest speed and accelerating at the greatest rate. These were then compared to the speed codes and acceleration codes to find out whether or not the bus driver exceeded the legal limits. Therefore, this investigation has concluded, using derivatives, that while the driver has not been breaking acceleration codes, he was speeding. Thank you for listening to Bellevue News Today.